very stubborn challenge. And now we begin to see the value of not only collaboration, but by strategic in interventions and policies, creating a smooth sequencing for us to build upon strengths. To drive new industry and economic sectors that are supported by knowledge and hungry for innovation, we must act to harness the energy of our young people through skills and training to prepare them for a new era of, of prosperity. Energy collaboration can provide the basis for reducing costs and increasing competitiveness and attracting foreign direct investments. Increasing foreign investments provide the capital needed for local businesses to enhance their position, their markets, and their productive capacity. Increasing economic activity knocks on to create increased demand for existing and new skills. Better access to training and skills development will help to meet these new demands. And the best education and training systems, as well as the most progressive and competitive business environments, are born out of highly efficient connectivity. So you see the potential for what can be a value-capturing economic loop. This loop creates a change-sensitive and self-adjusting cycle of all of these areas combined. What emerges is a robust platform for knowledge and information fortifying the wheels of competitiveness, sustainable development, and expansion by keeping it turning at a vigorous pace. The creation of this change-sensitive and self-adjusting cycle, however, will not be achieved, achieved easily if we each stand on our own. But the benefits to be gained from breaking the mold of the natural evolution of things and replacing it with disruptive new ideas for a new kind of engagement are clear and nothing moves without political will. At one time, business as usual would have been the safest generalization for how we pursue development. Business as usual as part of the reason why we have is part of the reason why we have remained vulnerable to global economic glitches and why our economies have remained at the mercy of factors over which we have no control. But that generalization has little substance in a modern environment that demands that we innovate, think strategically, and find or make ways to advance. That generalization may very well be found at the heartbeat of the implementation deficits and a sort of resignation to vulnerabilities and risks. The very basis of innovation, entrepreneurship, and change comes alive by deciding that we will adapt vulnerability by, to influence and risk to opportunity. Therefore, the plateau that some of us have arrived at where product productivity has become sluggish, fiscal deficits are increasing, economic growth remains at the lower end of the scale, and the poor and the vulnerable are increasingly exposed is not a condition that we must choose to live with. Stagnation and ceilings must never be the way our story as a region ends or is told in the future. We must break down barriers and initiate breakthrough actions to a desirable future place in the world for our people. So while we acknowledge the mere mention of progress, sustainability, and strength in the global economy will not create action, we also see that finding common ground for collaboration begins with partnership. Partnership empowers political will. Political will motivates action, and confidence enlivens political will. This is how we as a region can stop swimming against the tide and aim for an achievable objective of becoming the ones who influence the tide. This is the only way for us to reshape our resilience as small island developing states, to collaborate as a matter of urgency and not simply choice. Because for every nation you can identify as having influence in the world economy, you will find broad collaboration, interconnectivity, knowledge and competitiveness as part of their policy infrastructure. So I now return where I began to make a central point which must be the pivot for what, for what we discuss and what we intend for the outcomes of this conference to be. New thinking for new times means we must be resolute in our responsibility to find opportunities to move forward. The three areas I focused on, energy, connectivity, and knowledge, are not the sum total of how we must rethink, reform, and reaffirm to collaboration but they are amongst the most important sustainability issues we must face. The time has come, however, 
for us to pool our collective human and technical resources and harness our formidable talents amongst our people. And our every endeavor must also be with tomorrow in mind. The 2015 region that we see sees countries are, that are grappling with increasing debt to GDP ratios that threaten hard fought development and have lift, that have lifted thousands out of poverty. The preliminary overview of the economies of Latin America and the Caribbean 2014, published by ECLAC, cited the region's growth rate as continuing to decline, which, sta which started in 2011, to an average regional growth rate of 1.1% 1 .1 in 2014. In turn, this has been exacerbated by reduced official, de official development assistance with the graduation of many of the region's countries into the higher middle income country category. So there's an irony about the current status of our, re of our region. Our work to date has helped to create the conditions where our fundamentals are judged by higher standards and more stringent measures. By having a, but having achieved this enhanced status, we now have less access to sustain support for critical initiatives. In simple terms, this means that we must make our own way on our own strength based on the future we seek to deliver for our people. To me, this means that the things we discuss today simply must translate to action quickly and deliberately. As leaders, we do not have the luxury of time as our predecessors did, and our responsibility is much greater than before. We must be bold in considering that the trajectory of our progress may well be better off in another direction. If we so decide, we must have the political will to choose that direction and the, persever and the perseverance to hold to our path. Trinidad and Tobago maintains support for the vision of our region by CARICOM member states in 2014, which is set out in the strategic framework plan for the 2015-2019 period. This vision, you will recall, is based on the implementation of eight integrated strategic priorities over a five-year period, including building economic, social, technological, and environmental resi resilience, strengthening community governance, and pursuing coordinated foreign policy, research, and development and innovation. The community's call for a people-centered development paradigm is one that I firmly support. As heads of government, when we asked our citizens to elect us to office, the responsibilities we took on included a commitment to keep our promises. Some of these promises are ones we made categorically, but some of these promises were also inferred, that we will secure the present, build the future, and leave no one behind. Today, here, right now, is the moment we demonstrate how we will do that. We must stand up to that responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. <clears throat> Honorable Minister Barath, we are, we are grateful to you. The pleasure is now mine to introduce a very special and distinguished colleague. His Excellency, Dr. Mahisa Ketui, who we all know as the Secretary General of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. He will speak on the theme, International Economic and Trade Issues. Your Excellency. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Your Excellencies, Right Honorable Prime Ministers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first may I uh, express my appreciation to the government of Trinidad and Tobago for according me the privilege to join you in a very exciting journey, disruptive thinking. I should uh, hasten to caution, as an international civil servant, I'm not trained to be disruptive. Uh, in fact, I'm learning after years of disruptive work to get some order in my thinking and application. But I find it exciting to join you at a challenging time. 
looking at where you're coming from, clearly analyzing where you are, properly diagnosing the global situation, and having the courage to do what you need to do for the coming period. I will try to make some two, three very simple and straightforward arguments. One, that the changing global dynamics today make deepening what we call developmental regionalism, a regional integration driven by a desire to build on uh, your different competencies and on the knowledge that a united Caribbean is larger than the sum total of its parts, that the choice is not existent. It's an imperative that you embrace ever reinforcing with new thinking. And my second argument is that after a long time of global glorification of the retreating states, unfettered liberalism, the evidence available before us is that to break out of the mid-income trap, to rise to the ambitions being set globally in this uh, very active multilateral year, we must reinvent the developmental state. How do you balance between a developmental state which normally is relatively strong, relatively single-minded, at a time when you have to nurture greater de democratic values and inclusion, should be a challenge that you are ready to embrace. And third, that the changing dynamics of international relations, particularly international economic relations, make it necessary for you to look on the wholesale market as leaders within the developing community, how you enhance the national and regional interests globally more easily than by unilateral activity as individual states or even as a regional law. Let me now try to add to the confusion with my, uh, my reading of these challenging times. The year 2015 is very interesting in two fundamental ways. One, that unlike most years, the world in 2015 has three or four major multilateral activities on its menu. In July this year, the world meets in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, at the third Financing for Development Conference, FFD3. At this conference, the world leaders seek to set out the foundation of how we will deliver on the promises of disciplining human behavior that the current generation does not overborrow on the ecological resources of the next generation, that growth is not mistaken for development, meaning that the pursuit of profit is not necessarily made to be in contradiction with social aspirations of inclusion and, and growth. And three, that the countries who have been joining us all in setting high ambition of where we should be going are ready to put their money where their mouths are. Later in September, we have the summit in New York where the world agrees on the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, as an agenda of the post-2015 for the next 15 years. 